In this video, we'll quickly review some of the matrix-related definitions you'll see throughout the class. If you have a strong linear algebra background, none of this should be new or surprising. In the first part, we'll review the difference between scalars, vectors, and matrices. In the second part, we'll review how to operate on each of the items. Let's start by differentiating scalars, vectors, and matrices. A scalar is just a single number. Scalars can be positive, zero, negative, rational, irrational, fraction, decimal, and more. The physical constants you're accustomed to seeing, such as pi and e, are all scalars. The dimension of a scalar is one by one. A vector can be thought of a bunch of scalars grouped together in either one row or one column. If the scalars are grouped horizontally, we call it a row vector. A row vector can use either spaces or commas to delineate the individual entries. If the scalars are grouped vertically, we call it a column vector. This is the standard way of writing a column vector, but you can also express it similarly to a row vector by using semicolons instead of spaces or commas. A row vector has one row and n columns, whereas a column vector has n rows and one column. Just as a vector is a collection of scalars, a matrix is a collection of vectors. The primary difference between a vector and a matrix is that a matrix has multiple rows and columns, whereas a vector either has one row or one column. You can interpret a matrix as some vertically stacked row vectors or some horizontally stacked column vectors. We say the dimensions are m by n. m and n don't necessarily have to be equal. It's very common for them in linear systems to be equal, in which case we say the matrix is square. Now that we've covered the basic definitions, let's see what mathematical operations we can apply. The transpose is a simple but very important operation. To transpose a vector or matrix A, you just flip the rows and columns. You'll commonly see the exponent t to denote the transpose, but you might also see an apostrophe. If we were to transpose this matrix here, we would take each row and make it its own column. Note that this flips the dimensions of the vector or matrix. In the example we have here, this matrix is 2 by 3, but the transpose matrix becomes 3 by 2. Obviously, transposing a scalar doesn't do anything because it's 1 by 1. To add and subtract matrices, both operands need to be the same size. If both operands are compatible, we perform vector or matrix addition by adding corresponding elements. Unsurprisingly, the resulting matrix will also be the same size as the operands. Addition and subtractive are both commutative and associative. It doesn't matter if you add A to B or B to A, or if you add multiple operands before adding others. When we multiply a vector or matrix by a scalar, the scalar is distributed to every term. We can see that each element in this row vector is multiplied by the 3, which is the scalar. The same works for scalar division. The resulting vector or matrix will be the same size as the vector or matrix that's being multiplied. When we have two operands, A and B, we can distribute the scalar alpha to each of the operands. If we have two scalars, alpha and beta, and one matrix or vector A, we can distribute both scalars. Non-scalar multiplication is much more complex. Before any math is done, both operands need to have matching inner dimensions. If A is size m by n, and B is size n by p, they have matching inner dimensions because the number of columns of A equals the number of rows of B. The resulting matrix C will be size m by p, which are the outer dimensions of A and B, respectively. To compute the element in the i-th row and j-th column of C, we take the sum of the product of the elements in the i-th row of A and the j-th column of B. We'll go over an example in the next slide. One important point is that in general, matrix multiplication is not commutative. A times B does not always equal B times A. Here's an example of matrix multiplication. First, notice that A is size 3 by 2. We want to multiply it by B, which is the transpose of another 3 by 2 matrix. Because A has two columns and B after the transpose has two rows, the inner dimensions match and we can multiply. The resulting matrix will have three rows and three columns, which are the outer dimensions of A and B. Let's say we want to find the element of C in the second row and third column. We take the sum of the products of the elements in the second row of the A matrix and the third columns of the B transpose matrix. 
we take the 3 and multiply it by the negative 2, then add it to the product of 0 and negative 9. We can repeat this process to find the other 8 elements of C. Before discussing the matrix inverse, we should introduce the identity matrix. The identity matrix, commonly denoted I, contains ones along the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. I usually has a subscript denoting its size. For instance, I sub 2 means that it's a 2 by 2 identity matrix. The identity matrix is important because it helps to find the matrix inverse. The matrix Z, which satisfies AZ equals I, is the inverse of A. There are many conditions which stipulate the existence or non-existence of Z. Perhaps the easiest way to check if A is invertible is if it's square. A non-square matrix cannot be inverted. From your linear algebra class, you learned many ways to check if the inverse of A exists, so I won't go over it all here. So far, we've done addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but matrix division doesn't exist. Instead, you multiply it by the inverse. To find A, we multiply C by B inverse. Because matrix multiplication is not commutative, we generally cannot do A equals B inverse times C. To summarize, we reviewed the basic definitions of a scalar, vector, and matrix. A scalar is just a number and has size 1 by 1. A vector either has one row and one column, and a matrix has multiple rows and multiple columns. When we transpose a matrix or vector, we swap its rows and columns. This also swaps its dimensions. Addition and subtraction can be performed if the operands are the same size. Scalar multiplication is simple, whereas matrix multiplication is considerably more complex. Although matrix division does not exist, we can use the matrix inverse in its place. I hope this was a quick review of the basic linear algebra terms you learned in the previous semester. See you next time.